Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to start a video where we make a custom holster or holder for this guy that can fit on my Haley Strategic Thorax plate carrier. Now, maybe I'll make another video about the whole plate carrier setup, but basically I want to be able to contain and hold this radio right here kind of on the side panel of my chest. There's lots of different pouches for this thing. Um, but I wanted this to be to make a hard case for it such that the critical buttons can't get inadvertently pressed and then it holds it nice and secure. This is just the good old Baofeng UV5R. This is actually the BF F8HP, the 8 watt version of the UV5R. If you want to learn more about these radios, I would suggest going to Not a Rubicon Productions on YouTube and I'll throw a link to his channel in the description below. If you've seen my DJI Pocket 3 video, where I kind of designed my own version of what I think the next Pocket 3 should be, I had to first start by drawing the DJI Pocket 2. And unfortunately, in this project, kind of the same thing. I want to be able to design around the intricate details and features of this radio. However, uh, I've searched around on the internet haven't been able to find any good solid model CAD files for this, amazingly. Anyway, we gotta draw this thing, so <sighs> let's get started. It's gonna take a while. Okay, so here's uh, making some progress. I'm still just sort of roughing things in and getting the overall shape and layout down but it's taken shape i'm probably got to be close to halfway there or so okay so i finished modeling up a mock representative model which will allow me to construct uh, virtually um, whatever this holder is going to look like so it's not perfect by any means but it's close enough for us to continue here okay so i finished kind of a first initial design here uh, it mainly consists of this inner sleeve in which the radio sits. You can see that I have these cylindrical mating dowels that will sort of allow it to rotate within the uh, chest rig side component. I also have these little rotation stops so that the inner sleeve can only rotate a fixed amount. So I'll turn on the rig side piece. So it's got these, you know, two, I don't know what you call these, tongues that would go down in the molly webbing. Um, if I turn this transparent here, you can see that the uh, stops allow this thing to swivel completely upright and parallel. And then when it opens up, it can only open up about 45 degrees and then the stops kind of take over. Then I do also have these uh, snap latches here on both sides, which will allow the inner sleeve to splay them and then kind of lock in place. So we'll see how well that works, but we'll get this printed now. This artifact down here, these holes are just to allow the resin to not pool inside a cupped uh, volume. So it just lets the resin sort of sluice out during the printing process. Okay, so we printed out this first design iteration. Uh, I then kind of tweaked and honed the fitment of some of the geometry from that first design and print run and was pretty happy with how things were. However, it was at this point where I kind of discovered a major design flaw with that philosophy. And that is that this tab here uh, would interfere with the push to talk cable connector which goes here so 
this tab was just too far outboard and it interfered with the cable. Um, so I had to get rid of this kind of snap tab closure. And then I went to this uh, second gen design. Now, <clears throat> this one is a little bit more simplified. So I just uh, forewent the uh, splayable locking tabs on the rig side component. And I more cocooned completely, or more completely cocooned, the radio in the inner sleeve. So you can see I have a large panel to access uh, some key functions. I've debated about whether or not I wanted to hollow and make a window here, but uh, for now we'll just go with it like it is. And so I've been able to put this sort of uh, upper strut um, much more inboard relative to where the previous uh, rig side tab was. So we'll go ahead and print this guy here and see how it does. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is I just made a simplified um, series of holes for some elastic webbing and basically when you want to close this thing up you just wrap the loop around this boss here and it will hold this secure to the rig side. Alright guys so here are all of the iterations that I printed out uh, during this process. These first ones Rev1 and Rev2 uh, these were basically the same design um, so I had the initial one that I printed out liked it quite a bit um, but there were some adjustments that had to be made the adjustments were made on the second revision uh, but this was the point at which i discovered the major design issue with this uh, these tabs here um, i'll just illustrate it for you here with the um, radio unit in the in the dealio um, the push to talk cable connector interfered with this tab. And I don't know if you can see it, but basically uh, I cannot push this down all the way without really straining this uh, strain relief element here. So this is just was a non-viable solution and that got me out of the sort of flexible tab scenario. You can maybe see how far out the uh, connector is from being able to fully seat like that. So we'll take the radio out. So the first two revisions are basically just uh, paperweights at this stage. Um, I then printed out a first revision of the new and improved design. Um, this was pretty good, but there were some things I needed to change. Um, very minor tweaks. And that lent, led me to kind of the final version here. And we'll just go over how this, uh, how the radio fits in here. Get rid of this guy. Okay, I'll push all these to the side. So we got our inner sleeve, which rotates nice and freely. And we drop the uh, bale thing, UV5R, down in there. <clears throat> One of the big uh, changes I did to the uh, second spin here was these reliefs for the <laughs> screws on the backside. These were scraping quite badly um, with the Rev3 unit, so uh, those reliefs uh, performed well. As maybe you can see, uh, I can still quite easily see the display and have access to all of the buttons when this is on my rig. And you can obviously see that the stops only allow this to fall to about a 45 degree angle. Um, I then fastened some knots on a piece of bungee and this then secures this quite nicely. Um, I also kind of play around with doing a little twist there before letting it engage. And then just to kind of illustrate the um, push to talk cable connectivity. Uh, one other adjustment I had to make was this relief here to allow uh, this housing protector to flex out of the way. It was slightly not in the right position on the Rev3. Uh, you can see I actually pointed to it here as something that had to be changed. Uh, but then when I put the push to talk connector in, it goes nice and flush and the strain relief is, is in a very acceptable position. So all good. All right, and so here is the finished product on the rig itself.
Um, very happy again with how this turned out. Like I mentioned, um, you know, I'll see if I decide to wrap this with multicam black to match the rest of the rig, or if I'll just leave it as is, or maybe give it a little bit of a paint or a dye job. Well, that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching this. It was a really fun project to do and very happy with how it all turned out. As always, like and subscribe, and I'll check you out next time. Peace out.